Arden Show. Starring Eve Arden. Co-starring Alan Jocelyn. From Lieber House in New York City comes the greatest skin care discovery of our time. Its name is Dove. This amazing new bath and toilet bar is actually one quarter cleansing cream. Every bar of new Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Ordinary soap dries your skin, but Dove cleans your skin while you wash. Make this simple test. Wash one half of your face with soap, any soap. Rinse thoroughly and then notice how dry your skin feels after using soap. Now wash the other half of your face with amazing new Dove. No after feeling of dryness now. Your skin has a velvety, just creamed feeling. That's because Dove creams your skin while you wash. Lever Brothers guarantees that Dove is better for your skin than any soap or your money back. Dove creams your skin while you wash. Dear Liza, as your publisher, I'm taking the liberty of introducing to you my very dear friend, George Howell. I've known him for many years, and he's a wonderful guy. I know you will find him charming, cultured, witty, and lovable. <laughs> yes, yes, lo lovable. Lovable. I told Staunton lovable wasn't the sort of word you put in a letter of introduction, so we tried to think of another one. Uh, personable, winsome, cute. <laughs> we tried for hours, but we just couldn't find a word that fit as well. <laughs> and lovable. He also has elephantiasis of the ego. <laughs> and always keeps his feet on the coffee table. <laughs> and I hope you will accord him the same courtesy and treatment you would give me. I was planning to sue him next week. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Howell, how come such a charming, cultured, witty, and lovable fellow like you went to all this trouble to meet little old me? I read your book, Summer's End, and I was absolutely entranced. I thought it was just wonderful. Oh, really? Yes, then I made a few inquiries, and uh, I discovered you were quite a remarkable woman. A bit of a recluse, perhaps, but a very interesting woman. Show me one place here where it says I have elephantiasis of the ego and all the <laughs> like me Well, then I presume the reason you're here is to get an autographed copy of my book, right? No, no, no thanks. Tea? Sandwich? Shoe shine? <laughs> I'll tell you what I came for. Well, I'll listen, but you may not go home with it. <laughs> I represent the Howell Speakers Bureau, and I'd like to have you as a client and arrange a lecture tour for you. You mean go around the country speaking to audiences? You'd be great. You can have your introduction back. I'll tell Mr. Stanton I found you charming, cultured, witty, and out of your lovable little mind. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure meeting you, Mr. Howell, and now if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Oh, <laughs> uh, one of us has to leave, Mr. Howell, and I live here. <laughs> I have 13 speaking dates lined up for you, starting in Scranton, Pennsylvania. From there, you make an overnight hop to Buffalo. I don't want to bore you with my personal problems, but I have a terror of people. I couldn't face an audience to save my neck. We'll fix that. Oh, look, Mr. Howell, believe me, this is something I've been trying to fix all my life. It's a king-sized phobia with me. I quit the waves because I couldn't say here at roll call. <laughs> Sometime I'll go to an analyst and find out why. It took you six years to pay off the debts you had when your husband died. You have two daughters to support and a mother and a wire-haired terrier. <laughs> the money's nearly gone from the sale of your book. You're overdrawn at the bank and if you... Do I wear the tops or bottoms of my pajamas? 
both. You're a conservative. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Howe, but you've been wasting a lot of time on research. Here's your sweater, Mother. Lou, I thought you might be cold. Oh, thanks, Mary. Usually, I can't get her to go across the room to shut the window. <laughs> well? Well, uh, would you help me with my homework, Mother? Homework? She's taking an advanced course in eavesdropping. <laughs> All right, girls, you've reached the first plateau. Would you care to try for an introduction to the gentleman? I'd love to meet them. These are my twin daughters, Mary and Jenny. I'm the older one. Well, age before beauty, how do you do? Can crummy men. <laughs> how do you do? I must say, you don't look like twins. That's because we're not identical twins. Oh, oh, I see. You see, Mr. Howell, with identical twins, what happens is the seed breaks in half. Yes, at... that'll do, Mary. <laughs> if he wants to find out, <laughs> let him find out the hard way. Let him go to high school. <laughs> Mr. Howell, I'd like you to meet my mother. How do you... <laughs> she isn't here. She will be. Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't know you had company. <laughs> mother, this is George Howell. My mother, Mrs. Martin. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. The pleasure is mine, Mrs. Martin. Liza, I thought you might be hungry. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mother. It's been ten minutes since I had lunch. <laughs> Mrs. Martin, I, I just can't believe that you're her mother. Her older sister, maybe, but surely not her mother. Well, show him the birth certificate, Mother, and let's settle the argument. I have to get there. Mrs. Hammond, I'll just leave this here, and I'll drop back tomorrow night around 8, and we can discuss it. There is no it to discuss. Oh, Liza, it would be a wonderful idea. Yes, Mother, we'd love to go on an it, and we could use the money that you'd make on a speaking tour. I can't see how three large ears could fit into one small keyhole. And, of course, on some of the trips, there's no reason you couldn't all go along. Oh, really? Oh, my gray suit would be wonderful for traveling, and I can put a little white collar on my black crepe dress. Oh, but I think I will need a new hat. Mr. Howell, you fight dirty. Well, thanks. All right, everybody out. Out, blow, scram, beat it. I said everybody. Fame and fortune awaits you. Money to buy you the luxuries as well as the necessities. All this is yours if you'll just say the word. All right, Mr. Howell, I'll say the word. Police. <laughs> Don't act hastily, Mrs. Hammond. Mull it over. Goodbye, Mr. Howell. Oh, you enunciate so beautifully. You'll be a sensation. Out. <laughs> I'll be here tomorrow at 8. Sharp. Persistent cuss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I get I I Ladies and gentlemen, why are you all staring at me? Mr. Howell would like a drink. Where are you going? Out. That walking univac will be here at eight. Where are you going? She's going out. Out at this time of night? It's 7.30. You've been out later than that. Oh, Liza. What are you going? She's going out tonight with all that traffic out there and maybe hold up men. And she may catch cold. I'm going to walk two blocks down a well-lighted street and go to a movie. I'll be back around 11, Mother. <laughs> if you please. All right. Go ahead. Leave us motherless as well as fatherless, without food, without shelter, without even a cashmere sweater. <laughs> if the movie is this bad, I'll be back at 8.30. What movie are we going to? <laughs> Mr. Howell, do you usually go to this much trouble to get a speaker for your bureau? No, I usually don't. I guess I just have a special interest in your case. 
This is my case. I get stage fright in front of an audience. You'd be sensational in front of an audience. Sure, I'd be sensational. I'd faint. <laughs> All right. I'll carry the smelling salts, but you're going to make this tour. Mr. Howell, were you in the war? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was. Then how come it took us that long to win? <laughs> Look, Liza, you haven't got stage fright. You've got world fright. You've been a widow for six years. You've buried yourself within these four walls and hidden in the pages of the books you write. You've been hiding from life. Oh, come on now. <laughs> when did you last have a highball? When did you last go on a date? When did you last kiss a man? <laughs> Mr. Howell, I don't know where you've been getting your information, but it's not from the usual reliable source. Oh, really? <laughs> did you ever hear of still waters that run deep? You? At Harvard, my name is still spoken in hushed whispers. <laughs> You're a Harvard man? <laughs> I went to Wellesley. But my memories are at Harvard. As a matter of fact, at West Point, flirtation walk is still off limits to me. <laughs> Why, to this very day, I can't go to a party without a man wanting to drink champagne out of my slipper. If you like, I can show you a whole closet full of soggy slippers. <laughs> All right, let's go. Where? Show me. It's been years since I've seen a soggy slipper. <laughs> Look, Liza, I happen to know that the wildest party you've been on in years was a PTA luncheon. <laughs> You're an attractive woman. You dress well. You have a sense of humor. And what are you doing? You're vegetating. No woman should go six years without having at least one highball, without once being in a position where she's got to either kiss a man or give him a slap in the face. our guest speaker of the afternoon, a woman whose pioneer efforts in the field of biochemistry serves as a shining example to all... Biochemistry? Oh, well, I guess I should have changed that when I copied it. This was written for Madame Curie. <laughs> in the field of literature, serves as a shining example to all womankind, Mrs. Eliza Havman. How does this look, Mother? Well, it looks all right to us, dear, but on the stage, you look kind of poor. Poor? Mm -hmm. But don't you worry, I picked up some things will dress it up beautifully, dear. Mother, I haven't even written my speech yet. Well, I picked out one for you. Here, you can sort of practice on it as a model. Oh, really? Fellow citizens, as I stand here and look into the faces of my fellow Americans, I cannot believe you could send this innocent boy to the chair. <laughs> that Clarence Darrow's first address. Well, let's avoid executions, Mother. I don't want to give them any ideas. <laughs> mother, I'm going on a lecture tour, not into burlesque. <laughs> now, that looks uh, very, very chic. Now, you pay attention to the speech. I'll take care of the clothes. Why don't you start with a joke, Mother? That's the way the speakers at school always start. A joke? That's a good idea, Jenny. Mother, I know a good one. Once there was an old maid in an upper berth, and in the middle of the night she wanted a glass of water, so she called the porter. And the porter brought Enough. the water. Enough. Finish. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more of it. You understand? Mother, where did they hear that joke? From Jonathan Bellows at the playground. We've got to keep them away from those older children. Jonathan, seven and a half years old. <laughs> he tells stories like that? Oh, he doesn't understand them. But then neither do we. <laughs> well, thank goodness. Oh, Mary, will you answer the door, dear? Jenny, take your gentleman friend to his room. But, Mother, he wants to listen, too. He, yeah, well, he isn't even seven and a half. Get him out of here. <laughs> Mother... Well, maybe she's... I've just 
has been waiting in here for the rain to stop. <laughs> oh, I just love dressing her up ever since she was a little girl. You know, it's so much more fun to dress girls than boys. We stay clean longer. <laughs> I think that's better. Mm -hmm. That is an improvement. Liza, don't you go changing anything now. No, I won't, Mother. Here's your speech. My speech? Yes, I wrote the first one. I've had so much more experience. Oh, now, good. Uh, you always start off with a touch of humor. Uh-huh. It seems there was an old maid in an upper... Have <laughs> <laughs> you been hanging around with a seven-and-a-half-year-old boy named Jonathan Bellows? Uh, beg your pardon? Oh, look, Mr. Howe, I don't think I can go through with it. Really, I don't. I couldn't even speak to my family, and one of them's a wire-haired terrier. <laughs> look, Liza, I'll tell you a trick a great speaker once taught me. When you're frightened of making a speech in front of an audience, why, well, just imagine them in a ridiculous position. In a ridiculous position? Yes, anything at all. Like when they get up in the morning, their hair all must, or standing on their heads, anything at all. Big red noses light up. Or they might be sitting in their underwear. Sitting in their underwear. Yeah, sitting in their underwear. All right, girls, now don't get silly. Now, uh, here's your itinerary, and we've had a great bit of luck. Georgia Pembroke has canceled a booking at the Passaic Ladies Auxiliary. Who's Georgia Pembroke? Uh, here, here she is. She's a woman explorer. Killed two tigers with her bare hands. <laughs> she could have done it with her photograph. <laughs> well, say it's a great place to break in, so we booked you in there on October 4th. On October 4th? Oh, well, that'll give me time to write my speech, and I can decide where I'm going to sit. October 4th? That's tomorrow. Yes, that's right. Oh, no, Mr. Howe, I couldn't do I'll it tomorrow. I'll pick you up and drive you over, and we'll get the... What are you mumbling? Oh, 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 she's lost her voice. Lost her voice. She's lost her voice. She always does this. She gets pissed. What? Whenever she gets pissed. What's the matter? Look, everybody, keep calm now. Look, I... Sit down, sit down, dear. We'll take care of everything. Look, why don't we all be very quiet now? Why don't you girls... Why do we have to go now? Go on. A cup of tea. What are you pulling here? Scared <laughs> to death and tightened up because you're afraid to make a speech in front of a few housewives in Passaic. You know what's wrong with you? You're a chicken. <laughs> chicken, I told you that the first day I saw you. You're not afraid to make a speech. You're afraid to live. Here you are with everything any sane, able-bodied woman would scream for, and you can't do it. And do you know why? All right, why? That's right. <laughs> Say, have you got anything to say for yourself? Nothing. All right, let's have it. What? Three words. <laughs> First word. Yeah. Me, George, man, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm. All right, second word, second word, little word. But, the, and, a, uh, 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 I'm a, Paul, pull, yank. Jerk. <laughs> it only took me 17 seconds. <laughs> oh, I've got news for you. I don't want you on this tour. Here's your contract back. Oh, I'm really sorry, Mr. Howe, but I've got my voice back. Yeah. I've got my voice. Isn't that funny? The minute you tore up my contract, my voice came Why, back. Why, of course. Well, it just shows I couldn't go on a lecture tour. The same Why, thing would happen to me Of course there. you couldn't. You're right about everything, except that that isn't your contract. <laughs> bigger than me, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> I'll pick you up at 12 o'clock tomorrow and drive you to Passaic, and we can rehearse your speech on the way over. You know, when you're angry, you look beautiful. Here, 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 dear, here. Here, take this. How do you feel? <laughs> Once again, just to make sure, all those who have white slips will bring the potato salad. All those who have green slips will bring the cold slaw. <laughs> all those who have yellow slips will bring the hard-boiled eggs. And all those who have uh, 
red slip with a red heart. Get it? <laughs> the colors match the food? <laughs> well, I think this is a much better system than the one we had last year when nobody brought potato salad and we were up to our ears in cold slaw. <laughs> so I think a vote of thanks is due Sarah McLean for a wonderful, wonderful suggestion. <laughs> Mr. Howell of the Speaker's Bureau signaling to me there in the wings, and he has our guest speaker with him. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the lady who killed two tigers. <laughs> <laughs> Author of I Was an Aborigine for Six Months, Mrs. Georgia Pembroke. <laughs> Something wrong, ladies. Excuse me. But I sent a telegram to your secretary, Mrs. Potter, telling her that the tiger lady had poison ivy and Mrs. Hammond's going to take her place. But Mrs. Potter's in Boston. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go to Boston and find Mrs. Potter. No, 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 Liza, come back here. Mrs. Liza Hammond is a well-known author who's written a bestseller called Summer's End. Called what? Summer's End. I never heard of it. I think I left the water running in the bathtub. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Come on out and sit down, and I'll introduce yes, you. Yes, come on. Yes, yes you have to. I now can't. you must. <laughs> ladies? <laughs> ladies, I hate to be the one to have to tell you that you will not be hearing Mrs. Georgia Pembroke, the tiger lady, today as promised. Mr. Howell sent our secretary, Mrs. Potter, a telegram, but she's been in Boston for a week. If we had known about it a week ago, we could have canceled the booking and avoided this calamity. <laughs> well, it's no use crying over spilt milk, and so it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mrs. Uh, what was your name again, honey? <laughs> your name? That's funny. I knew it a minute ago. Mrs. <laughs> Liza Hammond. Uh, uh, Mrs. Liza Hammond, who has written a book called... Uh, what was the name of the book called? Summer's End. <laughs> How many here have read Summer's End by Mrs. Liza Hammond? <laughs> Are you sure that's the right name of the book? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, here she is, Mrs. Liza Hammond. <laughs> Ladies, a say, a say, a say. It gives me great pleasure to. I'm afraid we have a lemon. Auxiliary. Forgive me if I seemed a little ill at ease for a moment. It was only because, well, frankly, I was. <laughs> you see, this is my debut as a speaker, and I've been sitting there wondering how to start this speech, when suddenly I looked at all of you and I realized that I only had to get down to the bare essentials, <laughs> the basic foundation, so to speak. <laughs> it seems there was an old maid in an upper berth. And now a word from our alternate sponsor, Shulton. Old Spice means quality, said the captain to the bosun. So ask for the package with the ship that sails the ocean. Here's a fellow who looks and feels like the top of the morning. Mm hmm That's because he's starting his day the Old Spice way. Old Spice After Shave Lotion. The happiest ending a shave ever had. And it's good for your skin. Makes your face wake up. 
tingles it to a clean, fresh feeling. Fresh as the spray of the surf. And you'll really like that good, tangy, old spice scent. Bright and bracing as an ocean breeze. Now, what does all this luxury cost? Just one dollar. And never did a dollar bring you so much. So add spice to your life. Get Old Spice After Shave Lotion by Scholten. Just one of many famous Old Spice grooming aids for men. That's Old Spice After Shave Lotion from the laboratories of Scholten. I know. But the way you got to those women was just great, Liza. For a first speech, believe me, it was absolute tops. Well, it was just as you said. All I had to do was get down to the bare essential. <laughs> oh, those foundations. <laughs> but you were right. It is a whole new world. Traveling, meeting people. Yes, and this is just the beginning. Why, it's going to be wonderful out there. You're going to meet adventure, glamour. Romance this is an end of your sheltered life. Yeah, but let's taper off gradually. Oh, sure, we'll taper off gradually, like, uh, like... Well, say, what about you having dinner with me tonight? It's been six years, Mr. Howell. I don't think I'm ready. I'd, uh, oh. I'd like to go with you, but I'd, I'd, I'd do... What? I'd like oh, to... no, no. I'd like to go... Wait a minute. Don't start that again. Remember, DBC. Don't be chicken. <laughs> Young lady, I'm going to have to do some work on you. We can't have any more of this nonsense. You're a big girl now. You can't. <laughs> now, I want you to go right in that room and change your clothes so I can take you out to dinner. All right, I will, Mr. Howe. Just one thing. Why do you wear those atrocious pink striped shorts? <laughs> The Eve Arden Show was brought to you by Dove, the amazing beauty discovery that creams your skin while you wash. Next week's sponsor will be Shulton, makers of Old Spice and other fine toiletries.